What's up guys, I want to show you a new knife that I'm reviewing now, which is definitely without a question my favorite CRKT knife I've ever owned. This is the awesome uh, CRKT 5250, the Nurk Tie. All right, um, take a look at this thing. <laughs> this is just ridiculously awesome. It, it's so cool. Uh, there's so much I want to talk about this knife. I'm going to start off with just doing some specs. All right, look at this beast. Look at that in my hand. Massive knife, all right? Open like this, it's 9.1 inches, all right? It's got a 3.8 inch blade, a very cool uh, recurve um, kind of spear point style blade. It is a uh, hollow ground. It's an AUS-8 and the hardwell is uh, 58 to 59. I don't usually mention, uh, you know, Rockwell hardness scales for my reviews, but lately people have been asking for it. But even with that glare coming up on that blade, you can see that nice hollow ground edge. And this thing is just hair popping sharp out of the box. Really, really sexy looking. Uh, 420J2 stainless frame here, and it is uh, titanium anodized. The whole thing was anodized, this kind of bluish hue. Some areas have little spots of like purple and you know slightly different colors, but generally it's a blue. And then they went back and they polished around the entire exterior, so you have that stainless look, and then all the interior parts are that blue. You get some close-up shots of that. You can see even on the inside of the frame here and everything. Just really cool. As big as this is, being over nine inches long, all right, having almost a four inch blade, this only weighs 5.1 ounces, all right? And when I tell you 5.1 ounces, that might seem a little heavy. I'm telling you that this thing, it, that was a complete shock to me. This feels no heavier than three ounces, all right? It's just, it, it's amazing. But anyway, um, it, it's, it's a really cool knife. There is a lot I wanna talk about. Uh, first of all, this knife uh, is an award winner. For 2010, it won uh, Most Innovative Design at Blade Show. And hopefully one of these years, I will be able to make it out to Blade Show to do uh, you know, some videos out there. I think that'd be really cool. It's a, um, it's kind of a lockback design, but check this out. First of all, let me, let me give you a little more history with this knife, right? This is a collaboration between Brian Tai and basically the Nurk model knife, which was uh, created by Glenn Klecker. All right, Brian Tai, Canadian um, knife maker, very, very well known. Does, does work with a lot of different people. Uh, his custom stuff is just out of this world. And by the way, the custom version of this knife is amazing. Um, you're getting a slightly different materials. You're also gonna get um, some CNC machine grooves, you know, all throughout the blade. You know, a little Brian Tai signature up here, but you're also talking $525. At least at knife art, other places you're gonna see very, you're gonna see very similar designs. This is the production version of that knife. It is just so wicked. But take a look at here. I mean, overall, it's just like you know, one big handle, right? But if you really look closely, you'll see with the cutout coming across here, that the only thing connecting this part of the handle to the front part of the handle is this thin piece right here, okay? So what happens is you kind of create this seesaw type effect, all right? And when you depress the back here, like you would a normal lock back, it pivots towards the middle and lifts up the top, which releases the lock. And I'll go into detail about this in a second, but I just wanna show you this general design here. This is just really, really cool. And again, this is something that uh, originally Glenn Klecker came up with and it was on the Nurk model knife. And Brian Ty saw this and thought, oh my God, awesome. <laughs> I gotta come up with my own. So the, uh, you know, the Ty Nurk was born. Very, very cool. Um, anyway, let's look up, first of all, it is a, a flow-through design. You see all these pins and standoffs and so forth. Um, there's three kind of roller pins. These just, the, uh, the sleeve over top of the pin itself just kind of freely rolls, kind of like an assembly line. It's very, uh, like, industrial to me. Also on top here, both of these are rollers too, you know, so you can spin those around if you want. Um, they don't make noise or anything, you know, when you move the knife around, but they are free-floating, which is pretty cool. But there's also three of them here to uh, just give you a little extra heavy dutiness where you are going to be manipulating that and pushing that. Okay, so there's no chance of it twisting or, you know, coming apart or anything like that. So just really, really cool. 
Now how the, the lock mechanism works here, let me start from a closed position. Um, you have the roller pin on the back there, okay, but you also have the secondary pin towards the middle. This is where your locking pin is. And first off, the knife does stay closed. And as I push this, you'll see it kind of suck in a little bit. Right there. Okay, this keeps the uh, retention so that it won't shake open. So it's very safe in your pocket. And how that happens is just be basically the shape of the, uh, the tang here. Let me show you right here. See how there's a little notch cut into there? Follow that notch with your eye as that rotates around the pivot. Remember the pin's going through the handle right there. It slips in right there. And it sits in that little notch, okay? So you have pressure on the back part of the frame here, keeping that closed. So it's not gonna shake open, which is very cool. All right, now there's also, take a look at this notch. This is where the, uh, the pin locks in. Okay, this is your locking mechanism. So keep an eye right there as this is rotating around. You see, there it is. And there's the pin. As we keep going forward, that's where it locks in. You can hear that nice, secure lockup. Let's listen to it again. All right, that locks in. Now, because this is a lock back style mechanism where you're depressing down here, uh, the one fear with knives like this is that if you're giving a good squeeze, the you know palm of your hand may unlock that. I've been trying for about six or seven minutes straight, trying to, to squeeze as hard as I can here and different grips to unlock this knife, it's not gonna happen. All right, basically because as you're squeezing down, you may think there's pressure on here, but there's also pressure way up the spine of here. As well as if you have a, uh, a normal saber grip, your thumb is also reassuring that that is pushed down against the lock. Uh, think about how a frame lock, your grip strengthens the lock, same thing here. Now, if you do not have a saber grip like this and you have more of a natural grip, you think, well, you know, definitely if I squeeze, it's gonna depress that. It's just not the case. In most cases, this portion of the frame is also hitting your hand, which is preventing pressure on that. But even if you are directly putting pressure on that like this, all right, this is not going to unlock because I'm putting so much pressure on the mivet. <laughs> the mivet. <laughs> yes, what is that? I don't know, because I just made it up. I meant to say the middle of the pivot and it just came out, mivet. Yeah, the middle of that pivot point where it's kind of rocking back and forth. So there's really no way you're going to disengage that lock just by gripping this very tightly. Okay, so that's not, not an issue here at all. But it is just, it's an awesome looking knife. It's extremely innovative. Like I said, I mean, it literally won an award for it, the design. 2010 blade, most innovative design. Razor sharp, massive blade, very sexy lines on this too. Oh, I gotta get rid of the fingerprints. It's gonna bug me. Yeah, very nice lines on this, having a spear point style blade with that thick swedge, but still having a nice recurve towards the bottom here. Very aggressive cutter. Um, Hollow ground done right. Some people like their flat ground blades, their full flat ground. You know, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone has preference, but this is a, a nice sharp knife and it's gonna be very effective at cutting. Now the natural grip here, the whole knife does lock in, in your hand very nicely, okay? The entire knife is smooth. There's no jimping anywhere. But uh, also keep in mind, because of these very heavy finger choils here, okay, you're not, you really do have a great grip on this knife, okay? All the cutouts in the skeletonized frame also give you added grip, you know, and security. But this first, this pointer finger uh, choil here with this kind of oversized guard that hangs over, it really ensures that first of all, there's no way you're going to slide up on this, okay? If you're gonna be stabbing, penetrating, whatever, you're not gonna slide forward. That's just not an issue, all right? There is a slight curve taken out of the back here for your kind of thumb to rest nicely. I naturally um, rest my thumb here, but if you do want to choke up just a little, you can see also another curve portion cut out towards the uh, base of the blade there. So if you want to choke up, you can hold it like that. Holding a knife like this, I find is, uh, although, you know, it could be comfortable, it's not really meant for it, okay, because of the finger tools. But if you do were, were to put your middle finger and then ring just like that, you can cut like that. Honestly, I think the knife's too large for that kind of cutting. Um, but just how I would naturally do it without trying to set it up is my finger would land here. It would be further from the tip that I would like to use that, you know, the knife in that manner. But um, lockup's great. It's not going anywhere. You can, you saw me open this slowly, okay, which you can do by using the cutouts in the blade. You can use that kind of like a, you know, spider coat cutout and open this nice and slow as to not scare people. However, you'll see that there is a, an extension here on the tang. 
So you can use that as a flipper, which is a very effective flipper. And the knife is super smooth, and that doubles as the, the front portion of the guard here. All right, so let me unlock this a little so you can kind of see this design. So I turn that blade. That's your guard on the front. Overall, great look, you know, but then as you close this, it protrudes out the back and actually angles up. So you put your pointer finger on the top and basically push down. And uh, with this one, when I push down, if I kind of twist my hand like this and push it like this, I can get it to open up. I mean, it's very smooth in the pivot, extremely smooth. All right, so most of the time I can get it to open all the way. But um, I have noticed sometimes if I'm just playing around with it a little bit, well, in fact, it's still working really good. <laughs> but a couple times when it was right out of the box, like that, it doesn't go quite as, you know, owing to a lock position. So just a little bit of a wrist action and it is super fast, super smooth, and just works great. But again, sometimes some people don't like flippers or you don't like to make a spectacle of yourself, depending on if you're using this in a work environment or something. This is a flashy knife in my opinion. It's kind of a gentleman's knife, but it is flashy and it is big. So I don't think that should be an issue. But if you don't like using a flipper, um, you can use the opening holes in the blade, the cutouts, to open it slow and manual like that. Fits great in the hand. Like I said, I mean, the thing feels like it's three ounces. I, I still don't believe it's 5.1 ounces, but that's what my scale said too. Actually, my scale said 5.0, but I'll go by the manufacturer's details and specs because that's probably more accurate than my scale. Um, just an amazing knife. Um, the MSRP on this one is 150. All right, but of course, like I've always said, you're not gonna pay, you're not gonna buy this direct most likely. Although I do have some, uh, some very cool things that I'm going to be offering you guys. You know what? I'm gonna tell you about it in this video. I have two more uh, VIP cards from CRKT. All right, which means it's 50% off anything, anything from their, their online website. So 50% off 150 is $75. $75 is the cheapest price you're gonna find this knife for. On the market right now, they usually run between um, $80 and $100. Most places have it for like 95 bucks. Now, this might rise you know, some eyebrows. And you go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. hold on, hold on. CRKTs, I love them because they're kind of cheap. You know, they're, a lot of them are affordable, innovative. But wait a minute, 100 bucks for AUS 8? Absolutely, why not? You know, first of all, if you want this design, you got two options. You got this awesome production version for $100 or you got the custom itself for $525. So it's just one of those things where if you just like the knife design, you don't have a choice to buy it. But I can tell you, I think it's worth it, all right? And, and a lot of people are very much too focused on blade steels and, you know, and price. And they'll, they'll always compare that. You know, you show a knife and you say, well, you know, it's got 440C and it's $85. They go, well, that's a ripoff. That's not necessarily the case. And there's always exceptions to the rule. You know, there's, there's awesome knives out there for $60 with C, uh, S30V stainless, right? And then there's customs for $900 with the same S30V stainless. Are you gonna say that's a ripoff? Probably not. There's just a lot of like things that go through people's mind and they automatically write things off because of that. Uh, I honestly think this is probably the only knife that I know of anyway, that you can use a, a good AUS-8 stainless that's properly heat treated and still sell it for hundred bucks and still make me happy makes me extremely happy. I think it is a fantastic knife. It's a big one too. I really like that. It's huge. It feels solid, but it doesn't have that, that heft, you know, it doesn't have that weight. By the way, pocket clip on this one, you can see it is only a, um, well, it comes brand new like this in a tip up position, which I happen to prefer, but you will also notice that there's holes right there to mount it tip down. Okay, something you don't always see with the uh, CRKT knives, but I think that's pretty cool. It is only set up for right hand carry, but that's the majority of us. So if you're lefty, eh, you're just kind of stuck again, but that's okay. <laughs> you're probably used to it by now, right? Um, Torx bits for the hardware. Uh, you have a decorative pivot screw here, but it still takes a normal, let's come in there real close, still takes a normal Torx bit screw, okay, the center, so no, no kind of funky, you know, uh, tools needed to disassemble this knife if you choose to do so. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, I have two VIP cards. I'm thinking right now I have nothing planned here, but I think if someone's interested in buying this, it'd be cool to get the 50% off because for $75, that's probably the best deal you're gonna find in this knife anywhere, you know, to buy it direct with those VIP cards. So, hmm, what should I do? 
How about, hmm, I don't want to make this kind of fair, but still random. You know, it's always hard to come up with ideas. Like I want to say, oh, the, the 50th commenter will automatically get the card, but then they might not use it. So I don't know. I'll think of something. I definitely have those two VIP cards. So if you're interested in this, this knife, and you're definitely going to buy it, why don't you shoot me a, shoot me a message? And uh, we'll see. I mean, if you're definitely going to get this thing, maybe I'll just take the first two people and just give you the codes that way, you know, because I like to be able to give you guys a deal on it. But, um, you know, I, I just hate to give the card to someone who's not going to use it. It seems like a waste. I'll figure something out. But, yeah, shoot me a message if you're, like, definitely going to get this thing and you want the best price that you're going to find on it. Let me know. So, anyway, super smooth, nice and big, really sharp, well put together, great lockup, very innovative design. I think it's really cool. Um, another question might arise, you know, how is it long term? Is this going to, you know, the bar going to bend out of shape or something? It's not going to bend out of shape. Of course, as I use knives for months and years, I will let you know if something goes wrong with them. If there's ever an issue, I'll give you an update video on it, but it is just a sexy knife. Check this out for size comparison. I had to grab the 51 Morpho simply because that has blue anodized uh, liners in it as well. What an awesome combo. Look at that. Pretty sexy, <laughs> but that's about, you know, that's just a size reference for you. Full size battle song is almost identical in length to the, uh, the closed folder here. It's not a small one. I can tell you though, if you happen to have some smaller hands, because of this, this finger troll being so large and open the way it is, you can see like, basically I'm using the, the lower half of it. See all the empty space here. So if you had bigger hands than I do, I still think this would fit you just fine because I got a little handle sticking out. I got a little extra up here. But if you had smaller handle, uh, excuse me, smaller hands, I still think it would fit really nice just because of the design. Your finger would just fall a little bit lower than mine. Really cool though. Absolutely love this thing. Um, I saw the original um, Nurks and I thought they were pretty cool. And uh, Brian Ty just took it to a whole nother level. Absolutely amazing. So if you like this design, but you're not really into the super big knives. Hang out a little while. Wait until the, uh, you know, the Nurk Tie 2 uh, comes out, which is definitely going to be the smaller version. But this one is the 5250, which is the original large version. I happen to prefer the large version. I haven't had the small one yet, but I'm getting back into some bigger knives. This is definitely going to be part of my EDC for a while. Look how slim that is. Uh, I don't have anything right here to show you. Uh, I don't have long sleeves. <laughs> I was going to grab something. I should have my fake pocket available, but this pocket clip does have a super low riding uh, clip on it. All right. It's not like if it came out of the frame and then over, it would literally be a low rider where you see nothing but the clip, but you're really seeing like that much in the knife. All right. So it is a very low profile uh, carry on this one. It sits nicely in the pocket. It's not going to go anywhere. The clip does have perfect tension on it. A couple companies out there make fantastic knives, but you know, because of the clip, I'm always weary about getting new knives from them. One I'm going to name is Cold Steel. Cold Steel makes some awesome knives, you know, but every single time I get one, I have to alter the clip to make it work for me. They're just too tight. Same with a lot of Benchmades for some reason. I don't know. But uh, this clip is perfect. I've never had a problem with a CRKT clip before. Perfect tension on it. And it's just a fantastic knife. Like I said, by far my favorite CRKT uh, model. They make so many different innovative designs and they're, they're always very affordable knives. And even for a hundred bucks, I think it's a great deal, but that's just me. So anyway, it comes in a normal box like this. Let's see what you get with it. Just, you know, regular plastic. And you get the little mini catalog. This is for 2011. So it is the older one. You'll probably get the new ones now, but I love these. This is such a small little detail, but this is perfect for like, if you're a passenger in a car or something, you know, it's a perfect little pamphlet, shows all the different models and, you know, things that they offer. It's a great read. A little blurb on each one, some specs. I love that. I wish every company did stuff like that. But anyway, that's it. Brian Ty Nurk. It's just, <laughs> it is my new favorite CRKT folder. And it's going to be EDC'd for a long time now. Super comfortable. Just, oh, I love it. It's really cool. So anyway, <laughs> that's it, guys. Hope you enjoy the review. As always, I thank you for watching. And yes, if you are definitely interested, I'm going by the trust system here. If you're definitely gonna get this thing, I'd like to see you get the best price on it. So maybe the first two people who send me a message on it, who are serious about it, um, I'll shoot you that code so you can use them. 
So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.